Welcome to the Oral Health Care Skills Web Series Number One, Denture Care. I am your facilitator, Mary Lou Vanderhorst, from the Regional Geriatric Program, Hamilton, Ontario. I would like to welcome the presenter, Kelly Vogel, from the Halton Ridge Health Department in Oakville, Ontario. Hello. And the knowledge broker, Terry Kirkpatrick, from the Senior Health Research Transfer Network in Ottawa, Ontario. Hello. We ask that you note several items. First, no photos in this presentation may be copied, but permissions may be requested. Secondly, this is an educational presentation to be used for learning purposes, and users of this information are responsible for adaptation of this information to their practice and work environment. We have made every effort to provide you with accurate, evidence-based, and useful information. Finally, we thank Sheraton, Colton Region, and RTPC for their contributions to make possible the Oral Health Care Skills Web Series. Kelly Vogel will now present Series 1, Denture Care. Types of dentures. There are two different types of dentures, complete dentures and partial dentures. You'll see in this slide that the two top dentures are both complete dentures. They replace all the teeth. Partial dentures are the ones shown in the middle and on the bottom row. Even if a denture has all the teeth except one, it's considered a partial denture. When removing an upper denture, you'll notice in the left-hand picture of this slide that the finger goes all the way to the back, it hooks around the back, and you pull down. This breaks the seal that's holding in a complete upper denture. And then, as you see in the picture on the right, you can pull out the denture very easily from the front. Although it's not shown, Removing the lower denture is very easy, usually because the ridge that holds the denture in has worn down. The, denture, the lower denture is very easy to just pull out, and so you can just pull it out at the front. When you're removing a partial denture, you'll notice that if it's on the top, the fingers have to go just above the clasp as shown on the picture on the left-hand side of the screen. It's right above the clasp, and then you just pull down. And then you do the opposite when you're taking out the denture on the lower. Dentures can build dental plaque, stain, and tartar. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to keep the denture clean. That is because it can create infections in the mouth or sore spots. It has been associated with pneumonias. It, of course, can create bad breath. And it can compromise the general health of an individual because of the bacterial accumulation. So to be able to achieve cleaning, the denture twice a day, twice a day. Sometimes the time of day has to be changed. If a client displays behavior showing that he doesn't want or she doesn't want the brushing to be done at the time that the caregiver asked, you might want to leave until a time that is more suitable for the client. In addition, you could spend much longer trying to do the oral care when a resident is not cooperative. Or you could wait till a time where you have two caregivers so that the oral care could be done faster. It's true, it is difficult to uh, be able to have two caregivers to do the oral care, but you could spend 10 minutes doing it by yourself, or you could reduce that time to half by having two, gear, two caregivers, half or less time. There are many different brands of toothbrushes. The important thing to remember is that a 
denture brush should have a pointed side as shown in the top picture. The pointed side of a denture brush is for the inside of a denture. The criteria for a brush that is used for the natural teeth is that it should always have soft bristles. Some may wonder why it is that we have a denture brush and a toothbrush on the screen as some of the tools for denture and oral care. For one reason is that they may only have a partial denture. And this means that there are natural teeth in the mouth that require cleaning with a toothbrush. If they have full dentures, so therefore no natural teeth, it's still very important that the oral tissues be cleansed with, cleansed with a soft toothbrush. It is important to discard the toothbrush after an illness. In addition, when the brush, whether it be a toothbrush or a denture brush, is frayed or dirty, it is no longer effective. It is also very important to clean the denture box. Every day, the box should be emptied of the solution that the denture was soaking in overnight, rinsed and dried thoroughly, especially the ridges at the top as, they can, as fungus and bacteria can grow in these places. Dishwashers can be used to clean denture cups. Denture cups can be viewed as any other utensil. As long as the dishwasher has met the approved food safety regulations by having a sanitizing cycle, this is adequate for cleaning. So it must have a wash and rinse cycle and be able to sanitize through the use of hot water or chemicals in the final rinse. Of course, denture cups too should be replaced following an illness or infection. You may notice that toothpaste is not mentioned in any of the supplies as a cleansing agent for remaining teeth and oral tissue. This is because the foaming action that increases the saliva flow and the number of times an individual may want to spit when you're using toothpaste. It also decreases the visibility for the caregiver and if a person has swallowing defects, uh, such as dysphagia, they can choke on the toothpaste. And many toothpastes have a very strong taste, and it doesn't always appeal to the older adult population. So you can use something that doesn't foam up as much as toothpaste. For example, you could dip the toothbrush bristles in a mouthwash and brush with that. If you choose to use a mouthwash, use a non-alcohol mouthwash as they're less drying to the oral tissues. Or you could use a product called Paravex. It's a gel and it doesn't foam up as much and the taste is mild. It is not necessary to use mouthwash routinely if the mouth is healthy and clean. Unfortunately, Paravex does not contain fluoride. We know that fluoride is important to the oral health of everyone, including those uh, in long-term care homes. So it is important to keep in mind that Paravex should be used for compromised individuals. If an individual can cooperate to rinse and spit, then they should be using fluoridated toothpaste. So to decide if you should use toothpaste or not, see if an individual can demonstrate that they can spit and rinse properly. If they cannot, then you should not be using toothpaste. As you know, sometimes people misplace or lose their own dentures. Or when going to the hospital, dentures are often removed from a person's mouth. If they're not labeled, they may never find their owner again. And redoing a denture for somebody who is compromised can be a challenge. Therefore, it is very important to label the dentures and the denture box and the toothbrush. This can be done by a dentist or a denturist, or the 
home or facility can purchase a denture labeling kit and somebody in the home can do this themselves. Labeling a denture can be very simple. It comes in the package with something that looks like steel wool. And what you do is you choose an area on the denture that is inconspicuous and you'll just roughen it with the steel wool. And then with the pencil provided in the kit, you put their name or initials, whatever will fit in the space to identify them. And then with what looks like clear nail polish that comes in the kit, you paint over it, let it dry, and then you paint over it a second time. Tips for good denture care. Cleaning dentures daily is very important. You do not use regular toothpaste on a denture as it's abrasive and it could scratch the denture. This is very important for the inside of the denture because that anatomy that is in the inside of the denture is what makes it custom and what, it's what makes it fit. So if you were to wear away that anatomy, then you could loosen the fit of the denture. There are denture pastes for cleaning dentures that are available. Something else that you can use to clean hard deposits on plastic dentures is vinegar and water. So a ratio of half vinegar, half water, daily or monthly to clean the denture can be used. This again is on dentures that are made with plastic. Partial dentures often have metal on them. If this solution was used on a partial denture, it could corrode the metal, thus weakening the denture. Partial dentures shouldn't be soaked in denture cleaners that are not made for partials, because again, this could weaken the metal on the partial dentures. All dentures, though, should never be soaked in bleach. If you're using commercial denture cleaners, they should be used with caution, and this is because the tablets can accidentally be eaten and make a person sick. And the liquid that after you, the tablet is dissolved in the water, if somebody comes along and drinks it, it can be dangerous for them. While there are some conflicting ideas about how denture should be stored, uh, some people feel that it should be stored dry or soaked briefly and then allowed to air dry. This is not the case of what should happen. Dentures should always, always be stored in a denture cup when not in the mouth um, and using uh, clean room temperature water. They should never be stored dry. Dentures should be removed at least uh, for three hours a day, if not overnight, that would be best. When cleaning the denture, it's best to put down a paper towel or a washcloth in the sink to prevent breakage if, if, if it's dropped. Cleaning the denture with cool water helps to prevent warping, and you want to make sure that you scrub all areas with a denture brush. There are different things that can happen to a denture, such as what is shown on this screen. On the top left-hand side of the screen, there's a broken denture. If dentures fit well, an individual should not have to use a denture adhesive. The only exception to that is a lower denture when the ridge is worn down of the, the mandible. You may have to use a denture adhesive. However, in all other cases, if it fits well, you shouldn't need one. Denture adhesives should be used as a temporary measure to hold the denture in place. If the denture is loose, then it should be professionally relined by a dentist or a denturist. Broken dentures, such as what you see displayed in this slide, should be repaired. If a denture doesn't fit properly, it can create sores. And if it is loose, it can be a swallowing risk and can cause choking. So if a denture is loose, you want to permanently remove it until it can be repaired. An example of this is sometimes with patients who are residents who are palliative, they have a very rapid weight loss. Well, when this happens, they can also lose weight in the mouth. And the result of this is that the denture can become loose and it can create sores or it can be a choking hazard. 
On the right hand side of the screen, you'll notice what you see is implants in, that are implanted into the jaw. They can stabilize dentures and replace missing teeth. It's important to clean around the implants. If they are not get kept clean, the implant can get loose and it can come out. The impact of dentures on the oral cavity. What you see in this slide are some of the different oral conditions that um, can, the dentures can impact. So at, on the top left and the bottom left, what you see is stomatitis. This is a generalized redness upper palate and the lower, pal the, the lower palate. This can be caused by unclean dentures or dentures staying in the mouth too long. To treat this, you would need an antifungal agent or antibacterial agent. To prevent this, it's important to take the dentures out daily and scrub the dentures, clean them and soak them in a solution of half vinegar, half water to clean them. Ideally, again, removing the dentures overnight would be best. In the middle, what you see is dry mouth or zero stomia. It can be caused by different things such as a genetic disorder, mouth breathing, or even a byproduct of being on different medications. To treat this, if the individual is able to, encourage them to drink more, more water, or they could use a saliva substitute or even chewing gum if they can do that. It's important to note that uh, with dryness in the oral cavity, you want to avoid using petroleum-based products as this can clog the pores. On the upper right side of the screen, what you see is angular shellosis. This is red inflamed sores at the corner of the mouth. This is a fungal or a bacteria, bacterial infection, and it can be caused by ill-fitting dentures or a vitamin B deficiency. The reason that it can be caused by ill-fitting dentures is if you have ever seen somebody who doesn't have dentures at all, you notice that the face kind of collapses. Well, if a denture doesn't fit well, to some extent the same thing happens. The corners of the mouth are turned in, and then they're constantly kept moist. When it's like that, it becomes the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. So it's important that if a denture doesn't fit well, to have them realigned so that they do. If there's a vitamin, vitamin B deficiency, you want to address that. Sometimes an antifungal agent or an antibacterial agent from a doctor or a dentist is required. In the last picture, what you see is a candida infection, and this of course can happen in the mouth too, that is what you're looking at. A weakened immune system um, or taking antibiotics for a long time, leaving the dentures in the mouth without taking them out, all these things can cause a candida infection. If that is the case, once the infection uh, clears up, then they may need an agent to provide from a doctor or a dentist to clear this up. It's important to replace the oral care tools, so the toothbrush, the denture box, the denture brush, all these things need to be replaced. So there are different tools that can aid with um, the oral, oral care program. What you see here is an oral health assessment tool, or OHAT, and the oral care plans. Both of these tools can aid in your oral care program. Thank you. For additional resources, I would like to direct your attention to the references on slide 18 for Halton Region and the HOHO -Ho link. Thank you. I would like to thank Kelly Vogel for the Series 1 Denture Care. I am your facilitator, Mary Lou Vanderhoorn, and along with Kelly Vogel and Carrie Kirkpatrick, our knowledge broker, we invite you to watch one of the other six Oral Healthcare Skills Web Series. Series 2, Tools of the Trade. Series 3, Oral Health Assessment. Series 4, Basic Oral Care. Series 6, Series 6, Infection Management. Series 7, 
infection control to Series 7 oral hygiene care planning. For more information and resources, we recommend that you go to any of the websites listed on pages 2 